Hi and welcome to History Time. In the past couple of weeks, you must have seen in the newspapers the story that the Gandhi statue on the marina is to be shifted temporarily to suit metro rail work. Let us look at some interesting aspects of this statue which has for long been a landmark in this city. The Gandhi statue is one of the symbols of Madras that is Chennai. If you look at the old Tamil films, if they wanted to indicate that a person had come to Madras, they would show it by means of four landmarks. The LIC building, the central station, the Egmore station and the Gandhi statue on the Marina Bay. It is that big a landmark. The statue itself came up on the beach in 1959 and it happens to be the first statue to be erected facing west on the seashore. Prior to that, particularly during British times, all the statues on the beachfront faced the sea. The first such statue was to V. Krishnaswamy Iyer, a very prominent lawyer, a judge of the High Court of Madras and later a member of the Governor's Executive Council. That statue was erected in front of Senate House in 1911. Thereafter, a few other statues came up, all of which faced the sea. The Gandhi statue, as I said, was the first one to be erected on the seafront in the late 1950s. The sculptor of this wonderful statue was Devi Prasad Roy Chowdhury, who was born in 1899 in Bengal and in 1929 came down south to become the principal of the Government College of Arts, which today we call the Government College of Fine Arts located in Egmore. Roy Chowdhury was a very talented painter and a sculptor. In fact, he was a genius, a maverick and a genius. It is said that once he completed a beautiful painting of a woman and left it by a window and that night there was a severe thunderstorm and rainwater fell on the painting and smudged it completely. Next day in the morning, he converted it into a painting of a crow sitting on a tree branch. That was how his mind worked. Rai Chaudhary, as I said, worked very well with metal as well. And therefore, in the 1950s, he was commissioned by the government of what was then Madras state to execute a statue of Mahatma Gandhi. Rai Chaudhary envisaged the statue as Gandhi on his Dandi march. And he executed the statue in 1956. Thereafter, it took three years for the government to construct the pedestal which was done by the PWD. And then in 1959, Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru came and unveiled the statue which became a great landmark of the city thereafter. The government of Bengal was very impressed with this bronze that Roy Chaudhary had executed for the government of Madras. And therefore, they commissioned him to execute an identical statue to be put up in Calcutta. And that statue was eventually unveiled at the intersection of Chaurangi and Park Street. Interestingly, just as the Gandhi statue on the marina is now going to shift to make way for metro rail, the statue in Calcutta also shifted in the 1970s to facilitate metro rail work in that city. It was eventually brought back to its old location. While Roy Chowdhury was working on the Calcutta Gandhi, he was also executing yet another statue for the government of Madras, which was the Triumph of Labour statue. This shows four labourers shifting a heavy rock using crowbars and sticks. The inspiration for this statue to Roy Chowdhury came from the landing of American troops in Iwo Jima during the Second World War. Roy Chowdhury saw a photograph of them holding aloft the American flag and decided that he would transform that into the labor statue. Four people are depicted shifting that heavy boulder and actually they were just two models. One was Srinivasan who worked in the College of Fine Arts and the other was Ramu, a student of the same college. The statue was completed in the 1950s and it was also unveiled on the Marina Beach. Everybody praised Roy Chowdhury for the wonderful Gandhi and for the wonderful Triumph of Labour statue. 
the Gandhi had cost him 40,000, the Labour statue had cost him 60,000. Eventually, a bill for 1 lakh and 10,000 was raised by him on the government. The amount was paid. But what Roy Chowdhury did not expect was a sales tax notice that came a few months later. It decreed that he had indulged in a commercial transaction with the government and therefore was liable to pay sales tax on it. Roy Chowdhury was horrified. A true artist, he had no idea about such things. Secondly, he had not kept any profit margin for himself because he believed that this was a work of art that the government had commissioned him to do. He tried to represent his point of view. Nobody was willing to listen. And what is very interesting is that despite all the praise that was showered on him, nobody in the government came forward to help him. Roy Chowdhury eventually had to file a case in the High Court of Madras. The matter came up before Justice K. Viraswamy, who was a great connoisseur of art himself. In his judgment, which was given in 1962, Justice Veerasamy ruled that this was not a commercial transaction. He said sales tax can be imposed on a transaction where the same product is made repeatedly and sold to several customers. What if the government did not purchase the Gandhi or the Triumph of Labour statue? Would Roy Chowdhury be able to sell it to anyone else? No, he said. And therefore, he ruled that this was a work of art and there was no scope for sales tax on this particular statue. A grateful Roy Chowdhury then went on to lead a life of happy retirement. Several students of his went on to become great artists, sculptors and painters. For a very long time, these were the two statues that stood on the Marina Beach. And then in 1968, when Aringyar Anna, as the Chief Minister of what had become Tamil Nadu state at by that time, organized the second World Tamil Conference. And then a series of statues were put up all along the beach, commemorating people who had contributed to the language. Some of the statues people hardly bother to look at. Yet others remain in the news for various reasons. The Karnagi statue is one such. But we will look at that sometime later. The statues themselves lend a lot of colour to the city. But we must not forget the Gandhi and the triumph of labour that led all the rest and even today are very distinct. The government is well within its right to shift the statue of Mahatma Gandhi to facilitate the metro rail work and we are sure that the statue will come back to where it was. There is just one request. During the time of transferring the statue, the government must ensure that it is in no way damaged. The government has had experience in shifting statues from one place to the other. There is no arguing about that. But very few statues have not suffered damage in the process. For instance, when the King George V statue in front of the harbour and the Edward VII statue in front of government estate were shifted, the pedestal suffered huge damages. Let us hope that the Gandhi statue is intact when it is shifted and is intact when it is brought back. I looked at this statue which is going to move in this episode. In the next episode, let us look at a statue that has been all around Madras practically and then finally has remained in one place for the past 80 years. I look forward to sharing that story with you in the next week. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.